Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex. And today we begin the journey of crafting my equipped cards and testing out all of my characters and all of this content with growing pierce going from zero percent pierce which where which is where we've been for the past you know five years but more recently the last two ish months worth of content and then slowly climbing our way up two percent four percent six percent etc seeing how valuable and basically invaluable pierce is because the majority of marvel future fight is pve content the majority of the best rewards in the game are all in pve content and pierce makes a lot of pve content a lot easier it helps your characters just smash through it so you absolutely positively want as much pierce as you can get on your premium cards once you craft them just two things three things to go over before we start one i have to answer the question one more time why did you wait this long to craft your cards i basically wanted to give everyone in the community time to craft their own cards and time to sort of get used to the system or at the very least time to farm these items up so that when i craft my cards i don't jump out to too crazy of a lead on you or anyone else secondly how do you farm the comic card uh, cubes which is the main thing that you need to craft your cards and then obviously re-roll the crafted cards once they're crafted right here you got to play gbr every single day i actually went ahead and bought the boost point sub to try to get these card crafting cubes even faster because i don't have that much time to play lately but you have to do you know anywhere from five if you're lucky to 10 runs a day in order to get all 500 of these on the plus side you're going to get gold you're going to get type enhancement kits you're going to get these uh, tokens so there's lots of other good things involved but you want to get as many of these as close to 500 as you can per day because it adds up as you can see i'm rocking 23,000. last but not least where can you get comic cards because we still need as many of these mythic as possible so i'm just going to run you very quickly through all of the different places that you can get comic cards as fast as i can so we got the dimension mission farming itself once you get the rift tokens you've got the rift token card box that you can purchase and get cards from you've got alliance battle extreme and you have to get at least 600,000 points but you can get it here from the rewards every single day you have the story mode ultimate mission which will require that you unlock specific characters from this one right here with thanos the future ends here but this one when you do get the fragments and you have at least a 25 percent chance on every single fragment even if you have none of the required tier three characters you still get a chance uh to open up and crack open a five or six star card which is fantastic you can also get them from Shadowlands. I believe it's like stage like four, nine, and, and 16 or something like that. You have to choose the stage on the far right. There's a stage for ISO, there's a stage for an obelisk, and there's a stage for a comic card. I always choose the comic card stage. You get two legendary cards, one heroic and one rare every single week. It's not a lot, but it definitely adds up. Speaking of adding up, you play your timeline battles, win or lose, you get your tokens, and then you use your glory tokens here and you open this chest and you can get comic cards and and Uru. Obviously the Uru I don't need, but I just got myself a five star and a four star card. Awesome, really good stuff. It, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it adds up. Speaking of adding up, even though I haven't been playing it, sorry to my Alliance, Alliance Conquest. Even if you just get, if you're in Challenger and you just get the second least, the second lowest number of attacks, just 10 attacks, you have a chance to open the chest and get a six star card no five star cards right no but six star card which is absolutely amazing you also have the um item shop there's a chance for a card to spawn here i think you have to pay for it with crystals so i wouldn't recommend that but again if you're desperate uh, and then the processor here i would highly recommend this if you don't need the feathers for anything else keep that in mind and you can process this multiple times uh, and you can get three and four star, two star and three star and four star, and maybe even sometimes a five star card. Okay, there we go. Um, two more here really quickly. We have world boss invasion. Sometimes, again, it's very rare. You have to get a high quality chest, like perhaps this heroic one. I didn't get a card. Maybe legendary or mythic has cards. I'm not sure. Uh, and then last but not least for big whales, co-op can have cards if you have a high VIP. And then last but not least, if you really need cards, and you can spend some money these chests are amazing to get five and six star cards it's a very high chance like a 20 percent chance to get a five or six star card and then of course you can always just go uh and and really bust the bank if you're really desperate for some cards so without further ado five minutes into the video let us let us begin with some ketchup mayo and mustard we're going to craft this card here guardians of the galaxy best story ever and I'm going to take you through the, uh, you know, the whole process step by step. We've done this already in a video for the Luna Snow card. 
but I wanted to do it again for you guys here, so we're going to do it. So first one up, we sacrifice five random mythic cards. They do not have to be premium. Fun fact, when this pro when this whole system was originally introduced, you had to use five premium cards. It was insane. It's way cheaper now. 400 of these bad boys. Here we go. Let's see what happens. We get a red star, okay, and we get crowd control time. So not the star we wanted and not the stat we wanted, but that's okay. We're just going to keep going. We have no interest and we're not thinking at all to re-roll at this point. Re-rolling at this point would be a waste of a premium card. So we're just going to keep crafting. Here we go. And of course, if you do this one at a time, right? If I waited like an, uh, if I, you know, only had those five cards and then I waited another couple weeks to build up cards again and then did this again, the crafting experience seems very slow. So one thing you could do is save up until you have 30 cards, until you have 10, I think it's 10,000 or something or so uh, cubes. So you can craft all six stars in one shot. It's up to you how you want to do it. But anyways, we get lightning resist. So it's not the stat we wanted and it's not the color we wanted. That's okay. We're going to go ahead and do the next one here. 1200 cubes now, which is about two and a half days worth of farming. We get another red star and we get lightning resist again. So we're looking, we're shaping up to be very, very tanky against thor uh in pvp <laughs> not really a worry of mine but there we go okay excellent crafter number two cool we get a reward that's worth 25 energy that's definitely commensurate no it's not going to be commensurate right if the if the achievement gave you what you spent back then you'd never have to spend any money in the game here we go crafting star number four what do we get uh, okay we got another green star yay and we got mind resist okay so we are getting absolutely shafted and this is great because all of you guys that wanted me to get bad luck, you're loving it. And don't worry, we'll turn our luck around later uh, when we reroll, probably. Okay, we get a blue star here and we get crit rate. So crit rate is actually one of the best stats here. You can either get crit rate, cooldown, or attack speed. I like the color, but I'll explain what I'm going to do after we, after we craft the last star. So here we go. We're going to craft the very last star. This is what I suggest everyone does is finish the crafting. Because as you can see, as you craft the stars, it doesn't change the stats of the other stars. It doesn't change anything, right? Everything's individual. So now we have some concentration increase. For those of you wondering, concentration is only good if you have um, reforged CTPs. I don't have any reforged CTPs, any like mighty or brilliant, you know, energies, regens or transcendences. So concentration is useless for me. Uh, the only good stats I have here are obviously the crit rate and the physical attack, although I would have preferred all attack instead of or sorry all attack instead of physical attack and then the only color that i want that that i have is blue the one blue star so i have two choices here. well i have three choices here i can leave the card as is and i can do nothing to it and i can just be thankful that i got these stats and they're not going to help me very much but you know well the, the physical attack's going to help me actually quite a bit and the crit rate's very nice too it's going to make it very easy to cap crit rate on characters that have uh, a CTP of Rage equipped, for example. So, you know what? At this point, you could just be done. And here's the thing. This is why I always, almost always recommend crafting over re-rolling a card. So I just spent those 30 Mythic cards crafting this card. And you might be thinking to yourself, man, that sucks, Alex. You just wasted it. You just spent 30 Mythic cards and then all you get is 10% physical attack and 10% crit rate. But that's amazing because I get those stats permanently forever. Even if I never touch this card again, all my characters now forever are going to get an extra 10% physical attack, as long as they use that, and 10% crit rate. Now, imagine this was a different video maybe six months ago, and I honestly made one like, whatever, eight months ago, uh, where I try to re-roll this card. Remember how many times I spent 20 Mythic cards in a video re-rolling this card? At least five times. So I just spent one and a half worth to guarantee myself stats. Whereas with re-rolling cards, you're not guaranteeing yourself anything there is zero guarantee so it's always better it's al almost always better to craft a card that has good stats than to continue re-rolling a card hoping to get good stats of course if i can re-roll a card and i can get stats like this you know six quality physical attack energy attack that's great but think about it you spend all those mythic cards just to roll this one card and you get five percent physical attack and five percent energy attack if you take those same cards, I got almost the worst possible roll, and I get 10% physical attack and 10% crit rate, which is actually better than 5% physical and 5% energy. So even a card where, where you know, four out of six, right? Like 60% of my stats rolled are trash. More than half of the stats rolled are trash. And the card is still better than getting a god roll 
on a regular mythic card so crafting has a much much smaller window for bad rng whereas here you could you could dump a hundred cards into this bad boy there are plenty of people that are watching right now that are going to comment like yep i spent a i spent a hundred cards trying to roll a baby spidey i spent i spent 50 cards i spent well over 100 cards trying to roll this card or that card it's 100 percent true so you know one option is just to leave the stats as they are now that is 100 percent an option and for those of you that don't have a lot of mythic cards and crafting cubes etc and you don't have any premium cards then this is where you would stop and you still get something out of it i'm going to re-roll instead so in order to re-roll i have to click on the combine button at the bottom and then i have to click on the craft combine if i do this this is re-rolling the stats at the bottom of the card that's re-rolling these stats crit rate energy attack physical attack I don't want to touch these stats because it's also going to re-roll the quality. I love this card. This card's amazing as is. So we're going to go combine. We're going to go craft combine. Now from here, I have two choices. I can either re-roll it 100% and I, all I have to spend is one premium card, 100,000 gold and 750 cubes. Or I can choose to lock the crit rate and I can choose to also lock if I want, if I really wanted to lock the physical attack. That's going to change the cost from gold to crystals. If you were a newer player or if you um, aren't a whale, I would recommend like if, if you were me, but let's say you're VIP like five or something or 10, whatever, I would say lock the crit rate. It's only 50 crystals. It's not that much. Reroll it. Me, I'm going to reroll everything. I'm going to reroll everything because I could I could absolutely use the crit rate, but I could also absolutely use the attack speed and the cooldown. So... It doesn't make sense at this point for me to start locking. Mm, maybe it does make sense for me to start locking. I just don't want to get too many blue stars and screw myself over uh, for my testing and, and have, you know, like if, if I mean, what are the chances I get? No, I mean, the chance, I mean, even if I get four other blue stars, it's not going to give me even if five out of six roll blue, uh, like four out of the remaining five roll blue. I'm still not going to get 5% five, 5 pierce. It'll still be stuck at 2% pierce. So you know what? I actually am going to lock this card. It's, it's, it's a little bit complicated when you're thinking about the RNG, but basically I need attack speed and I need cooldown. I need both of those stats, but it makes more sense to lock the crit rate now than to re-roll it. Because if, if I don't, if I re-roll this, I could get cold resist or poison resist. And then I'm going to have to hope to get attack speed, cooldown and crit rate on my other cards. Right? Because let's say I re-roll this like this, and all the other sets are good except this one. Right? So anyways, I'm going to lock this one, and I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to use a random premium card here, and we're going to re-roll this, and you're going to see what happens. So all the other stats, all the other colors are going to change. The color changes, and the stat changes. So this is really good. So we get two blue stars. Okay, this is really, really good. So we end up getting all attack, which is amazing. And we end up getting crit damage, which is also amazing. So I get two brand new awesome stats. This card is now rocking and it gave me the 2% pierce. Of course, the first three stats are not good, but this pretty much sets me up now. Now I can spend the rest of the week testing out these characters and seeing how much 2% pierce is really going to add to my account. Obviously, if that all attack had been blue, I would have been over the moon, but you can't have it all. Now, for those of you wondering, because I don't want to leave the video here and not tell you guys what I would do, what my next step would be, because I'm already sort of thinking of that in my head when I look at this card. So when I look at this card, um, again, if you're not a big whale, you want to keep as many blue stars as you can, regardless of the stats. So if I was going to reroll this one again, I would probably lock everything except the like, you know, it's tough because the, the thing is, actually, you know, what? I don't think I would reroll this card if I wasn't a whale. Because you have to, like, the, the, the number of stars does not carry across cards. So one card can give you 2 or 5% pierce. But if you have 5 blue stars, you're using 3 of those blue stars to give yourself 2% pierce. Those other 2 blue stars are not doing anything. So if you have 5 cards with 5 blue stars, you only have 10% pierce. Because you have 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. You're not getting that extra. So those extra stars... I mean, those extra 10 stars, it's two blue stars on five cards are basically going to waste. So if I wasn't a whale, I would basically just leave this card now forever. What I'm thinking of doing is basically just locking the crit rate and maybe locking the poison damage and rerolling the whole thing again. I'm not going to do it now, but that's what I would probably do as a whale because I don't care about the green stat as mind resist as much as I, I don't care about the fire resist. So I, I, I would like to get ignore defense. 
Um, as much as I like the crit damage, I prefer the blue star. Again, if I was a whale, and then this one hurts. But again, you're going for five blue stars. It really just depends whether you, you want the stat or you want the stars. It depends how badly you want one or the other. But yeah, so it's it's a little bit tricky. It, you know, I think the best way to approach it is probably to accept that you're going to spend the least amount or go. You know, I think it's it's kind of like electronics, right? If you're going to if you're going to spend money on electronics, it's better you buy something cheap and entry level and, and just, you know, get used to the technology and whatever and see how much you really need to use it or you go big and you buy something really top of the line. So it's going to last you a long time, right? You don't want to buy something that's sort of like mid-level. It's kind of expensive. It's still going to get, you know, it's it's still already obsolete compared to newer phones. And it's it's going to cost you more than an entry-level phone. And you may not end up, end up using it that much. So that's really how I approach the crafted stats. For the majority of players, I think, you know, take your first take your first craft and just accept it or maybe reroll it once and see what you get. Reroll like five or six of the stats and see what you get. So you basically get two chances at 12 rolls for, for stats. Or if you want to be a whale, go and try to craft a perfect card. But in general, it's better to re-roll another card, like re-recraft -re another card than it is to continuously re-roll the same card. So technically what I would do is, because who knows, maybe I get a lot of blue stars and I get the stats that I need, right? If I get ignored defense on another card, then I honestly don't care that this is fire resist. So. I would, I would be better off regardless of crafting another card. Let's say crafting Baby Spidey. If I get Ignore Defense, then I can lock the first stat, the third stat, and the fifth stat. And I can reroll from there. So yeah, that's my advice. That is how my first card went. It was a mixture of bad RNG and good RNG. But now you can see what it's like. And with just one simple change, now I'm rocking 65% all attack, 2% pierce, uh, and pretty much everything else is, is sort of the same. Actually, I have uh, an extra 10% crit damage and crit rate. So that's really, really good, especially for characters like Professor X character or, and even Molecule Man, characters who uh, I struggled to cap their stats. Now they're a lot closer to being capped uh, or over capped based on these new stats. And see, I had to give him four crit damage Odin's blessings and he's still not capped, but he's much, much closer now than he was before. And that's without a uniform. So yeah, hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. Hopefully this has helped you and maybe given you the uh, information or courage that you need to uh, start crafting your cards good luck if you are and uh, yeah i will see you guys later and i'll be you know filling this one out with uh, new information as uh, as it comes along so yeah thanks so much for watching let me know and i'll see you in the next one take care